Hello there. Have you ever wanted to microdose your coffee? <laughs> now, that may sound dramatic, but in fact, there's a whole little realm of products that have cropped up in the past couple of years that are directly related to that. That being super concentrated coffees, or as one of them likes to call themselves, a microdosed coffee. Marketing's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> now, coffee concentrates are not uncommon. In fact, I would argue the most popular form of them is cold brew concentrate. This is a pretty efficient way of brewing cold brew in a more concentrated form that you will dilute out to you know, your flavor preference. I do this when I brew cold brew at home. I have done this in all the cafes I've ever worked at. It's a nice way to brew coffee a little bit more efficiently. But what about even more concentrated coffee? Coffee that is advertised as being brewed at 20 times the strength of a regular cup of coffee. So you ladle out yourself a tablespoon or a teaspoon or however much, and then you add some water and boom, you have a delicious cup of coffee. That's the idea, at least. <laughs> now I've received many, many, many DMs. In fact, more than I think anything else I've ever received DMs about, about a couple of the brands that I'm going to show today. I thought we should taste them. I thought we should look at the pricing of them to find out if they're actually more cost efficient than purchasing a regular cup of coffee. And I thought we should figure out which one is the best one. Let me show you what I have acquired. <laughs> now I have three different liquid concentrates here in front of me. The most popular one and the one I received the most questions about is this middle one right here. This is called Jot. This is called their ultra coffee. And if you have been on Instagram for any amount of time and have received any targeted ads about coffee, coffee related things, you have probably seen this one. The next one I have here is Javi. This is the one that is calling itself a microdose coffee concentrate. <laughs> Very dramatic. <laughs> it's kind of fun. <laughs> and then the third one I have here is One Buy. This is again, another super concentrate, if you will, uh, that you will dilute with water to have a cup of coffee. These are my liquid ones. However, there is also one I'd like to throw in the mix because I think it is very much directly related to this theme of super concentrated coffees we have going on today. While we're at it, I am gonna add Cometeer to the mix here today. This is something I've tried before. We have done an entire video on these. I very, very much like these pots. I think they are delicious. And while they aren't stable at, you know, a room temperature, like the rest of these are sold at, these are brewed very, very similarly. And then they're just frozen at peak freshness and shipped off to you. So since I have tried, loved and continued to drink this, I would like to see how the rest of these line up to this, because at this point, this is my only baseline for coffee concentrate. So we will be adding that to the mix. I think it is time to test and taste and get an understanding of what these are like. So while I get some more stuff set up, I want to give a huge thank you to today's sponsor. <laughs> I'd like to give a huge thank you to Shirley for sponsoring today's video. I can only drink coffee for so long in the day before it's time to switch to something a little less, well, caffeinated, which is where Shirley comes in. They've created wines that are alcohol free and quite delicious. Delicious. Made with only the best grapes in California, their wines are perfect for any occasion without sacrificing any flavor. Similarly to coffee, wines have an incredibly complicated flavor profile, so it was truly a delight to explore their variety of more traditional and sparkling non-alcoholic wines. Personally, I found their sparkling white wine to have a wonderful balance of acidity and sweetness with notes of light custard, peach, and bright lemon. It's perfect for settling down in the evening and pairs wonderfully with a few chapters of your favorite book. Now, you won't want to waste any time because Shirley has sold out four times already, so if you're thinking about trying it out, now's the time. And as a special bonus, if you click the link in the description and use code MORGAN20, you'll receive 20% off your order. Thank you again to Shirley for sponsoring today's video, and remember, link in the description and code MORGAN20 for 20% off. So I am back and I have a notebook now. <laughs> the first thing I wanna talk about is price per cup. Because in the marketing for a lot of these, one of their key differentiating factors of why you should try them instead of perhaps a more traditional way of brewing coffee is that the price per cup is more affordable. So let's start on this end and work our way over. To buy one of these little bottles of Javi Concentrate, I spent $17.95. It advertises as making 30 cups of coffee. So you do the math and you come out to about 59 cents per cup. This is gonna be the most affordable out of everything we have here. On the other side, we move over to Jot. This this was $24 for this bottle. It advertises as making 14 cups of coffee, so you are left with $1.71 per cup. This is the most expensive out of all of them. One buy was $21.24. It advertises as making 17 cups of coffee, so do some more math, $1.25 per cup. Now, Cometeer is set up a little bit differently. It's a little bit more of like a subscription model, but I was able to find the cost per cup on their website, and the cost per cup on average is $1.50. So this one lands somewhere 
somewhere in the middle, a little bit more on the higher end of the middle, but still in the middle. All of these have recommendations of how to prepare them. The general recipe is you add, you know, a teaspoon or a tablespoon or whatever their recommendation is, and then you add eight ounces of hot water to get your baseline, just black cup of coffee. For the sake of accurate comparison, I'm just gonna go across the board eight ounces of water. We are going to use the recommended amount of concentrate because that's how they want us to prepare it and that's how they think it tastes best. But same amount of water for all of these. So let's start off with our Javi. I just wanna have a little taste of this before we dilute it just to, just to see what it tastes like as is. I imagine one should give it a good shake before opening, feels right. It has a very dark chocolatey, like almost like cold brew, like smell to it, very nice. A little bit thicker than I was expecting. It's a little bit more syrupy in consistency. I will also mention that all of these are just water and coffee. There's no added flavors. There's no like added sneaky things to make it like a super concentrate. Uh, these are just very, very, very powerful doses of coffee that you're then diluting. So it's not meant to be consumed on its own. That is highly unpleasant. <laughs> Let's see if any of the other ones are a little bit more pleasant. This one has a much, much brighter smell to it. Not nearly that like straight, just cold brew concentrate sort of smell. Oh, wow. That tastes like straight up like cranberries. That is very interesting. That's not at all what I was expecting. Um, the Jot though, miles different in flavor here, which I think is gonna be very interesting once we dilute it. Next up, we have One By. This one's actually a little bit interesting because you do get a bit more information about the coffee that's inside. This says it is a single origin, Peruvian coffee. It describes itself as being nutty aroma with smooth flavors of chocolate and soft fruit. I'm always a fan of more information rather than less, so it's a point for one buy. We were overdue for a good spill, weren't we? I wouldn't describe it as having nutty flavors in the aroma. This very much smells like grape juice, not necessarily wine, but like a, like a Concord grape juice. These really are not meant to be consumed in concentrate form. <laughs> Let's do a blind taste test of these. Now I have got one more cup with me because I think I'd like to throw just one more wrench into the mix if I haven't already. <laughs> Frequently, these sort of concentrates are marketed as coffee substitutes. Now they are coffee, but a substitute in terms of the more traditional way of brewing or getting beans or all that stuff. If they wanna be a substitute, I think they should go head to head with some regular brewed coffee. <laughs> so alongside our four, coffee concentrates. I'm also gonna brew a regular, just plain old drip, eight ounce cup of coffee to compare alongside of these. Because if they can outshine the way I usually brew coffee, I think that's a plus for them. I have labeled all of these cups on the bottom with what they're actually gonna be. So when we get them all mixed up and after we taste them, we'll be able to actually find out what they are. I'm ashamed to admit that I have set up blind taste tests before and just completely forgotten to mark them in any sort of way of what they are. So at the end I was like, oh, I've, I've picked my favorite. And lo and behold, I have no idea what my favorite is and I have to do it all again. We won't be repeating that. Our cometeer is 25 grams of concentrate. Our one by would like us to add one tablespoon of concentrate. One full tablespoon is equivalent to 10 grams of liquid. Our Javi microdose concentrate would like us to add between one to two teaspoons of microdose coffee and mix it with your favorite liquid for a perfect cup of coffee. They do have a little warning label on the back. Uh, it has an exclamation point in everything. It says suggestion in all bowls. Start with one teaspoon per six ounces of liquid. Adjust the serving size to your liking. I want to add an additional about two ounces of water to bring it up to eight ounces. So I'm gonna go with one and a half teaspoons of concentrate. One and a half teaspoons of our Javi concentrate is equivalent to five grams of concentrate. <laughs> Next up, our infamous Jot is recommending we add one tablespoon of coffee concentrate or ultra coffee as they like to call it, which is about 12 grams of liquid. This is fantastic. My coffee's brewing back there. My water is almost done heating. Everything is going so well today. It is kind of interesting to see the different concentrations of coffee because there are radically different amounts of concentrate in each one of these drinks. Just so we're all on the same page, we are adding eight ounces of liquid to each one of these as a dilution. And just like that, we have 
five very similar looking cups of coffee. I will note just, just eyeballing them, these two right here have a slightly lighter color. Not light enough that I would be super concerned about the recommended concentration or the flavor of it, but I'm curious to see if that's gonna translate into some different flavors than the rest of them. Like all things, I always like assume there needs to be some sort of like tinkering with the recipe. However, it is nice when the company recommended recipe just works out as is. If we have to tinker with these a little bit later, we will. However, I'd like to see how these measure up as recommended. Now, as usual, I will have uh, the master of shuffling come out <laughs> and shuffle these for me, taking the mic with me. Welcome to the commentary from the other room while my husband shuffles uh, five glasses of hot coffee around the countertop. I hope he's doing a great job, everyone. I have returned. <laughs> and I am very excited to taste what we have shuffled in front of us because we are tasting and testing the tastes. I will use my favorite cupping spoon. I think we should just start on one side and work our way across. That's nice. I would describe that as having a pretty just all around nutty flavor. There's a lot of sweetness in it. There's not too much bitterness either on the end or the finish, which is pretty pleasant. That one is definitely fruitier. There's kind of a berryness to it, like a like a kind of a jammy berry, like strawberry jam sort of thing. Again, not a lot of bitterness. For the most part, it's it's pretty smooth all the way through. A little better concentration, I would say, on that one. Flavors all around are just a little bit more present than the very first cup. I'm thinking this is one of our coffees that needs to be diluted a bit more, perhaps. Uh, the flavors are definitely weaker. This is a very watery cup of coffee. It's not too watery, but I don't know, it's just, it's just on the cusp there where I just, I want a little bit more from it. And I have a hard time judging the flavors or the quality of it because there's just like not too much to taste there. Oh, that one is pleasant. There's a, there's a little bit of a bite on the front end of it. There's still a lot of sweetness all the way through. It's a, it's a pretty smooth coffee. It's just a little like tartness. Like it's not sour, it's not necessarily bitter, but it's just, it's a little tart on the front end, which goes through very nicely to the end. I think I know what that one is just from my, uh, <laughs> my own experience drinking that coffee on a pretty daily basis. I'm gonna make the assumption that that one is my drip coffee or my control group. It is significantly stronger. There is a much stronger balance between like kind of that bright, you know, pleasant bitterness that you sometimes get in coffee and like the nice sweeter notes on the end. Like that's, that's a little bit more what I'm expecting when I'm tasting coffee. So, I could be wrong. I'm gonna be embarrassed if I'm wrong, but I think this is the drip coffee. I would definitely say one of my favorites is this first one right here. Whichever this one is, is already pretty well balanced. Uh, it's very smooth, it's very sweet all the way through. There's a lot of really nice nutty chocolatiness, not like peanuts. I would say it's a little bit more like, kind of like toasted hazelnuts, like that kind of very like comforting, like there's a little bit of like a char, not a char, like a toasty, toastiness to it. <laughs> I was trying to say the words and I was like, it's not char, it's not burn. Those are all pretty bad descriptors, but there's a toasty hazelnutness to it. That's very, very nice. So this one is one of my favorites. I'd also say this one is one of my favorites. I think the concentration needs to be upped a little bit. I think flavor wise, this is a little bit weaker, but there is a very nice, balance between some lighter notes, some like fruity kind of berryness that's really pleasant that I'd like to really bring out with a higher concentration. While there's still a nice balance of like a little bit of bitterness that I want out of my coffee. If you served me either one of these coffees in a cafe, I think I would be pretty happy with them, but it's been a while and some of you probably know what's coming. There is one other test that I like to put coffees through because I think it's a very important component in picking a favorite coffee. And that test is the cream test. <laughs> it's time. It has been so long and I have been so excited about doing this again. In here is half and half, which is kind of the standard cream option in most coffee shops. Now each of these received nine grams of half and half and, and the color difference between these two is a lot more noticeable now. That's nice. That is a pretty traditional darker flavored coffee. Not necessarily a dark roast, but darker flavors in that toasted hazelnut like nuttiness there. There's a good amount of chocolate in it. It's just, it's pleasant. It's all around very nice. This one does get weakened quite a bit with the addition of cream. The flavors of the coffee are pretty much completely overshadowed by the creaminess and the fattiness that's coming through with what we added, which makes it not as good. This is why we do the cream test because sometimes coffees will taste really good on their own. Then when you add anything to it, they immediately just kind of get diluted down to like nothingness. However, that being said, even though this is my favorite out of all of them, I think, I do really like this one still. I think as a coffee on its own, it is, it's 
pretty enjoyable. Now for the moment of truth, let's find out what we have here. On this side, the one I think is my favorite out of all of them, let's take a peek. This one right here is the Cometeer coffee. And on this side, interesting. This one right here is the one by coffee. If we reference our sheet from before, do the math and we found out our Cometeer coffee was 150 per cup. This is a dollar and 50 for this. This coffee right here, the one by was 125 per cup. Meaning that when it comes to more affordable concentrated options, I would say this Cometeer and the one by would be my favorites. One thing I will note is that I do think the one by could use a higher concentration of the liquid concentrate to water, which will in fact change the price of the cup. I would say you could even go one and a half tablespoons per cup and be completely fine, which means the price of the cup is gonna go up, but I still think you're gonna be under that 150 mark that you have with the Cometeer. So these are still roughly in the same category. I also wanna find out if the one I thought was my drip coffee was my drip coffee. <laughs> Yep, nailed it. <laughs> now I checked underneath, the Javi is the one that was the lightest in color, the weakest in concentrate, and it's also the cheapest out of all of them. This one just didn't really, it didn't, it didn't speak to me at all. There, there wasn't really much going on in this cup, which is unfortunate, but just kind of is what it is. And while the Jot was gonna be my next runner up, again, I just didn't find it very well balanced. I don't think there was a ton in there that I would necessarily want to drink again, whereas the flavors of the one by one was a lot more interesting. There was a lot more difference in like the dimension of of the coffee was it was a far more balanced more just like interesting taste per sip now i'm still very much a fan of the more traditional forms of brewing stuff like this isn't going to ever replace coffee for me i very much like making coffee myself but i do acknowledge that these are really convenient at certain times in my life as i said i have continued to drink cometeer coffee i like it when i'm just i need something quick or like it in the evening when i want like a decaf and i don't want to like bring everything out and make a mess like it's very convenient in those sorts of situations Perhaps Perhaps this is something you'd like to try. And for me personally, this was a really interesting experiment because I have been, I've been getting <laughs> Mass advertised most of these on a very regular basis on Instagram. And it's always fun to find out whether those things are actually good or maybe they're not as much as they're cracked up to be. I think I will go finish off these cups of coffee. Maybe both of them, maybe maybe just one. We'll see how it goes. I hope this was fun for some of you or maybe educational or maybe it at least tickled some of those curiosities you've had about liquid concentrates because they are they're popping up more and more. There are tons of them and we only really looked at four or five of them today. I also would like to kind of tease that I think next week's video is gonna be kind of fun. This is also a very highly requested one that is coming up and uh, I'm excited about it as well. So keep an eye out for that. Until next time, I am Morgan Drinks Coffee on all the platforms that I'm active on. I'm here on YouTube for shorts and also weekly videos. I'm also on Instagram and TikTok if you're there. I post almost every single day. So you can find me there. You can also find lots of fun links in the description down below. <laughs> There's lots of things that I mentioned today. I will link these coffees. There's also like fun random surprises and whatnot. So I will see you next week. I hope all of you have a fantastic rest of your day. Okay, bye. <laughs>